time. It's going. Bright and early. Machine is on site. The crew is not yet. We're gonna get the house, you know, you protected. Right oh I'm yeah, the that, the crew. Yeah, Ian's gonna run the uh, the old CX thirty six B. Tried and true machine. We're gonna get the house padded up with some blankets so we can get in and out through the basement and through the front door. We're gonna remove some bushes. And start digging. Get in the basement. Cleaned up. All the stuff's gonna get moved out of here. Well. It kind of already is, but uh, move a couple more things over here. The reason we're doing this is because this line is clay and the mortar at the joints are all basically dissolved. It's probably not the right word, but disintegrated. I don't know. The mortar is no longer in the joints and roots are growing. The roots will always find their way to water and the sewer line is a constant flow of water for the plants. So roots are in there. We tried to clear them once, but the line has zero cleanouts and it makes it difficult to access it. So there's still roots in there, and this line is backing up, as you can see by all the toilet paper and whatnot on the floor down here. So we are excavating. We're gonna put a new sewer line in above the footing. It's gonna go right here, ideally. We're gonna go across, get rid of this, hydraulic cement that, get rid of both of those, hydraulic cement those. Line's gonna go ABS across the wall, and then we're gonna tie this back in, and we're gonna do a laundry drain with a vent. Okay, because we have so much clearance between the cast iron and the wall, there's really no reason to wreck an expensive carbide tooth sawzall blade. So we're gonna use our rigid cast iron snapper. I'll demonstrate how to use it, but basically the chain has wheels in it, similar to a tubing cutter, just a bunch of them. And they squeeze the pipe as you ratchet the handle. And ideally, if the cast iron is in decent shape, There'll be a nice clean break on there. And that'll save a lot of aggravation because I won't have to say a lot of curse words using the saws off because it takes so long to cut. Okay, the tool's fastened to the pipe. Rotate this lever so that this is uh, able to freewheel. Once you have it snug, basically these uh, kind of female doodads right there engage with the teeth on the chain. And then you'll turn this so the arrow face is cut. And then this huge handle basically just a big ratchet. And you'll just keep pushing it down. It'll squeeze these jaws together and cut the pipe. Okay, a little help from the sledgehammer to bust this up. That's a nice, relatively flush cut. Uh, so that's perfect for attaching a fern coat to, which is what we're gonna do. And that was pretty painless. It's a little sketch when you get close to popping the pipe in half because it takes a little bit of force. Uh, but the noise it makes is very satisfying when you snap that. So. Worked great. All right, I'm gonna try to get this one snapping if I can. One hand, I got a lot of leverage here, so make sure you got your eye protection on. Get your knees out of the way when this snaps. I think one more is gonna do it here. Hopefully it doesn't break in half. Oh, nope, one more. Come on. There it goes. That one was not as satisfying, but <laughs> it's broken. All right, so what are you doing, dude? We're uh, doing our last inspection location of the line before we start. So Mike knows where to put the bucket with the machine. Hopefully, we make it all the way to the main and we can start there because we're elevating the line about 18 inches above the foundation floor. And that'll lessen the amount of effort it takes for us to get the pipe here, so. You can show them what it looks like, too. Yeah, go ahead. Probably turn this off for now. The screen is very dirty, so. Oh, there's debris. And then we're going into the agua. There, we're taking a turn. The floor drain was just there to our left. And we're decently good right now, so we're gonna go outside and we're gonna mark that so they know where to where to shoot for at the foundation wall. Well probably
That's what he seems like to call him by. Okay. You're just squeaking by. <laughs> I knew you would know that one. <laughs> So I drilled a pilot hole through the foundation. They located the bit outside. So now I know what my elevation is gonna be inside. So I can start putting my hangers on the wall, getting it pitched correctly. And we can start getting the hole drilled, the four inch hole through the block. Ian's gonna do that. And we're gonna start running the three inch ABS across, getting our fixtures tied in. Washing machine's gonna go there. A tie-in for the slop sink's gonna go there somewhere. And we're gonna stick it through the wall. Check that pitch. What do you see? A little better, not quite enough better. Good rock hammer in it. Say it again? I think yo, I think we're banging this thing away. We got a little bit more to do. I'm gonna put the sink together. You have a slop sink going in downstairs. And uh, Dom's finishing up with the main. It's three inch, it goes all inside in this wall. And this is gonna be a piece of cake. Are we connecting to the clay out here? In the street. In the street, right? Yeah. So, yeah, pretty pretty much straightforward from here, you know? So. First pieces of SDR are in the trench. Got our clean out, extended up against the uh, foundation here have our Y pointing into the house. We've been checking pitch, making sure we're good. And we certainly are. And we're going out under the walkway. The guys excavated underneath so we could save the pavers on top. And we're gonna go back inside and finish up in there while these guys are finishing digging in the road. Right, and then I'll be following that. Right, but this ain't copper. No. That's why you gotta put a snake down there and follow with a metal snake. This, this has but a some, pipe. I know, but sometimes it's so blocked you can't get past it. Oh no, that's Pipe is going in. Adding our second clean out. You guys are going to cut the clay main. To add our clay by plastic fern co. We're rocking and rolling. Always put goop on the threads of your clean out plugs. Hand tight with these so that when you need to get them off, they come off easily. When they're outside, hand tight. Inside, we use a, uh, you know, obviously a wrench, but outside, we'll leave them hand tight because they're easy to get off. Less Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the home stretch. I need a female adapter for that because I don't have one. I have to pick one up at the store. This came out freaking beautiful here. Couple of offsets. Bang, baby, right on. Right on the money. Comes through there. Up to here. Got a trap with a vent for the uh, humidifier and the pump. Got our sink hooked up. I'm gonna get our water done here in a minute. Beautiful. Got our U-Bend and our vent for the washing machine that's gonna go here. We did the water pipes uh, two weeks ago for the sink. And then here's our four inch main clean out, three inch branch going to the house. And we got SDR underground, which I got a video of earlier. So bang up job, very, very good.